Hi everyone, I'm Liam and in this video we're going to take a look at the important topic of export settings. This topic can baffle new photographers and seasoned pros alike, but getting this right can be the difference between images that look like this and ones that look like this. When it comes to export settings, the first thing to determine is what you intend to do with the photos. And there are typically three main destinations for the images once we export. Social media, website, and print. Let's start by taking a look at exporting for social media. So here we are in Lightroom and we're gonna go into the export panel. So I'm gonna right click on the image, down to export and choose export. And this is the export panel. So in here we have the ability to decide the export location. We can rename the file and various other things, but we're gonna be concentrating on the file setting section, image sizing and output sharpening. So when we're exporting for social media, two of the most popular places that these images will end up is Facebook and Instagram. And those two services allow for image sizes up to 2048 pixels on the long edge. Anything larger than that will be aggressively compressed by the service resulting in low quality looking images. We'll start by limiting the image size to 2048 pixels on the long edge. So we can do that here in the image sizing section. I can tick the resize to fit option and from the drop down, I can choose long edge and then I can type in 2048 pixels on the long edge. Make sure to check don't enlarge just to make sure that it doesn't make the image any bigger than it already is. We want it to either shrink down or remain at a similar size. We don't want it to increase the size. We can completely ignore the resolution section on the right hand side. Uh, resolution is largely a redundant feature. It's something that a lot of the applications and purposes that we use our images for just will not use resolution at all. So if we set this to one or we set it to 500, we're actually gonna get exactly the same quality image, exactly the same file size and image dimension mentions as well. So we can completely ignore that. Do not worry about what resolution says in that section. Now that we have the image sizing set, the next thing to consider is compression. So compression is an algorithm that reduces the size of a file. This can be useful to ensure your file isn't taking up unnecessary space on your hard drives or on your website or using too much bandwidth when you're uploading or sharing those files. So compression settings in Lightroom can be found in the file settings section. And on the left, we can determine the image format. So for most cases, this is gonna be JPEG and the color space will be sRGB. On the right hand side, we have two compression options. We've got quality and we've got limit file sizes. The limit file size checkbox will override the quality slider and it'll give the compression engine a set goal to aim towards. So this can be useful for situations where a specific file size is needed, but I would avoid using this method unless absolutely necessary. So personally, I would recommend leaving this unchecked. The quality slider lets the compression engine know how much to reduce the file size by. So reducing the size will also reduce the quality, but at high percentages, that quality loss will likely be negligible. You probably wouldn't notice much of a difference, but as you drag that slider to the left and you go lower and lower, the more aggressive the compression algorithm will work to reduce the file size, but also reduces the quality of the image really quite drastically. So when we upload to social media, such as Instagram or Facebook, the service will actually compress the image themselves, even when we stick to a maximum long edge of 2048 pixels. So with that in mind, what we don't wanna do is compress the image twice. If we choose a low quality here, and then we upload to social media, it's gonna compress it twice and give us a really, really low quality image. Recommendation when we're uploading for social media is to export at quite a high quality level, so 100 or 90 at the lowest, so that when we upload it to social media, it's only being compressed once. The last thing we need to do is turn on output sharpening. So I'm just gonna check the box for sharpen four, choose screen, and then the amount as standard. And that's just gonna make sure that the image is nice and sharp when we upload to socials. So here's a recap of the best settings for social media. Next up, we have website use. So the principles here are quite similar to social media, but when we upload to a website such as Squarespace and like that, the image actually doesn't get compressed, unlike when we upload to social media. So we'll actually need to do that ourselves to ensure the images aren't too large, which could cause your website to slow down. We also want to ensure that the image is never scaled up bigger, as that will result in a loss of quality. So we want to upload a fairly large image resolution with some compression applied to keep the file sizes smaller. So back in the export panel and starting off with the file settings, I'm gonna leave the image format as JPEG and the color space as sRGB. And again, I'm gonna leave the file size unchecked, but I'll set the quality slider to around 70. Resize to fit the long edge of 2,500 pixels, which is typical for most websites, uh, and ensure don't enlarge is on as before. 
Again, ignore resolution, it has no bearing on these images as we export them. We're gonna set the sharpening for screen and standard. So this gives us a fairly large image at 2,500 pixels on the long edge, but we've got some compression applied to keep the file sizes smaller, which will help our website to load nice and fast. So here's a quick recap of the best settings for exporting images ready to upload to your website. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at the export settings for print. These settings will work for most printing situations and generally will be the best format for our clients when they're printing as well. But some specific printing scenarios may require specialized output settings as directed by the print lab, such as embedded print profiles or specific image dimensions. But for most printers, they simply need the highest resolution image file, which they'll then prep for print based on their own requirements. So the goal here is the highest possible resolution and we don't really have any concerns about file size. So with that in mind, I'm not gonna decrease the quality slider at all. I'm gonna leave that set to 100. As always, I'm gonna leave the limit file size unchecked. We also won't be resizing the image. We're gonna leave that unchecked. We do however want to sharpen the image because when you print a photo, you can lose quite a lot of the sharpness. So we want to add sharpening into the files as we export them. So I'm gonna go ahead and tick sharpen four. And then in the drop down, we have two different paper types that we can choose from. We've got glossy and we've got matte. So if you know the paper type that it's gonna be printed on, you can choose that here. If you're not sure, I'd recommend just choosing matte. I'm gonna leave the amount as standard. So that's gonna give us a really high resolution image file with all the data we need to be able to print. It's gonna be a fairly large file size as well, but usually that's not much of a concern when it comes to printing. So here's a recap of the best settings for print ready files. Now that you know what the best export settings are for each use case, you can actually save these as export presets. So to do that, simply adjust all the settings to whatever you need. Uh, make sure to set the correct export location and do any renaming you want to do as well. And then over on the left-hand side, you can press the Add button. Give your preset a name, and then you can save that in your user presets. So I've created my three export presets here, so I can quickly export my photos in the three formats that we've covered in this video. There are actually other tools that can be integrated into your export workflow that can help with things like reducing file sizes even further. So there's an app that I use called JPEG Mini, which is an incredible tool, and I'll be covering that one in an upcoming gear talk, so do make sure to check that out when it drops. I hope you found this video useful. Do let me know down in the comments if you did. I'll also pop a cheat sheet down below with the settings for each of the three scenarios that I've covered in the video. So if you need to come back and refer to those later, you can find them down below this video. So do check those out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.